Everyone should know the symptoms of a retinal tear. Even though it's unlikely to happen to you, thankfully, knowing the early signs and symptoms of one could save your vision. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nagoria. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and you're watching the iFax channel. In a retinal tear, the thin layer of tissue at the back of the eye, which is called the retina, develops a small crack or a tear. Now the retina is essential for vision. The retina captures light and it sends visual signals to the brain so that the brain can take those visual signals and make images. So it's obviously very important that your retina stays intact. But why is a retinal tear so dangerous? And how much time do you have as a patient before a retinal tear turns into something much worse? Well, a retinal tear is so dangerous because it can lead to something called a retinal detachment. And a retinal detachment can cause permanent vision loss if it's not treated in a fairly short amount of time. But when a retinal tear or retinal detachment is caught early, there is opportunity for an eye doctor, usually a retina specialist, to treat the tear before it progresses to a retinal detachment. This is why understanding how a retinal tear presents is really important. Before we get to that, it's also important to know who is at the highest risk for a retinal tear or detachment because there are specific people that are at more risk than others. So the first risk factor is aging. As we get older, the vitreous, which is the jelly inside the eye that keeps the eye a ball and gives it its shape. As we get older, this vitreous is going to start to pull away from the retina. And this is actually a normal process that's going to happen to us as we get older. When the vitreous shrinks and pulls away, the event itself is called a PVD or a posterior vitreous detachment. And in some cases, while this PVD is pulling away, so while while the vitreous is pulling on the retina to detach, it could cause a retinal tear because of that force of traction and that pulling. Now, PVDs are very common and they're going to happen to most people and retinal tears are not very common. So most PVDs happen without incident, meaning they happen without actually resulting in a retinal tear. But when you get that PVD with the new onset floater or flashes, it's so important to get your eye checked to make sure that it's just a PVD and nothing else. Aside from age, another major risk factor is gonna be having a very high negative prescription or having extreme nearsightedness. We also call this high myopia. This is because in this condition, the eyeball is actually longer and elongated eyeballs can actually increase the risk of retinal stress, which means a higher risk of retinal tears. Another risk is family history. Having a family history can also play a role. There is a genetic predisposition to retinal issues. So if you have a family member who's had a retinal detachment, you are at higher risk for also having a retinal detachment. Another potential risk factor for a retinal tear is having trauma to the eye. This could mean having previous eye surgery, or if you were in a car accident, or you had you know, a ball hit your face or anything like that where there's any trauma to the eye. And then after that, you start experiencing flashes or floaters. This is definitely very concerning for a retinal tear also. Another condition which can put you at risk is something called lattice degeneration. This is a thinning of the retina in certain areas, which can potentially also increase your risk. Now, how would you know if you're having a retinal tear? So let's talk about some of the symptoms that you might have and how much time you actually have to get to the eye doctor to get the retinal tear treated by laser. So by far, the most common symptoms of a retinal tear are gonna be flashes of lights and floaters. And usually these are gonna be new. So if you've had floaters for a while and you just see regular floaters every day, and they're not new, this is probably not a retinal tear because this is gonna be something that's new. So new flashes, a new rush of floaters, new onset floaters. This is something that should be evaluated as soon as possible. Also, you could get these symptoms on their own. So you could get flashes on its own. You could also get floaters on their own, but new dark spots in your vision should be evaluated by a retinal doctor. Now, if you start to see a shadow or that part of your visual field is actually cut out and you're starting to have a curtain-like effect that's coming over the vision, this could mean something more serious like a retinal detachment. So if you have any of these symptoms, especially if they're new, you definitely need to get it checked out. Now, how long can you wait? 
So I talked to a couple of my retina colleagues and generally all of my retina colleagues like to laser the retinal tears the day that they see them. So if you are experiencing something new, you definitely want to try to get checked out that day or the next day. And at the very most, no longer than two days. Some tears may never turn into detachment, but once there is a retinal detachment, it is way more complicated to treat. So usually lasering it the same day or within 24 hours is a really good idea. So what happens if you have these symptoms and it happens to be a Saturday or a Sunday or it's just the day that you cannot seem to find an eye doctor that can squeeze you in. Well, unfortunately, if you're really having these symptoms and you can't get in to see an eye doctor, you may have to go to the emergency room. Now, urgent care centers are great, but unfortunately, most urgent care centers are not gonna have the tools or specialists available that can actually diagnose and treat a retinal tear. So if you are near a major institution, like a major academic center who might have a retina doctor on call, that would be your best bet if this happens over the weekend or something that happens in the middle of the night. Now, usually you'll be sleeping, so you may not notice it till the next morning. Another way to find a retina doctor that can see you, especially if it's during the week, is just doing an internet search for retina doctors in your area. Most retina doctors are happy to see you if there's a concern for a retinal tear, and they usually have the equipment inside the office to treat you the same day. This would be much faster than being seen in an emergency room. And again, some emergency rooms, they have different types of staffing, so you don't really know if there's gonna be a retina doctor available to see you and treat you. This is why if you can find a retina doctor using the internet that can see you, that would be the most time efficient way to address these symptoms. Now, when it comes to treating a retinal tear, typically it is ophthalmologists who have a retina fellowship. And these are the types of ophthalmologists that would be very skilled at doing this type of laser. What the laser does is it seals the edges of the tear and this helps to prevent the tear from getting worse. And it also prevents the retina from completely lifting up into a retinal detachment. Now, is it possible for someone to not have any symptoms at all and still have a retinal tear? It's possible, but it's not really likely as retinal tears tend to be symptomatic, especially ones that are so big that they need lasering. But still having regular eye exams is important, especially if you're over 50, if you're nearsighted, have high myopia, or you have a family history of retinal detachments. It's a good idea to have that retina checked every year in those situations to make sure that there's no other abnormalities that you need to be worried about. Early detection and treatment are very important to preserving vision in this case. So if you are having symptoms like flashes and floaters or you're concerned that you may have a retinal tear, it is important to go see your eye doctor. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.